This is the video all about what I have chosen for my daughter's third grade homeschool year. So you already know if you've watched this video about the good and the beautiful that we have chosen to use the old the good and the beautiful language arts. She just completed level one and she did fine with the pace. She might as well keep going. So I didn't want to do the new level two where I know they slowed it down a bit. I wanted to keep it the pace that we were at because she's third grade and this is level two. So it came with the reader. I went ahead and bought the reader. The readers, you know, it's pretty good. And then we're gonna be adding in some of her own books. I gave her a challenge this year and I told her if she read 100 books in a year that I would give her $100 because I'm like dying for this child to be a reader. Like my other two children are so not readers. Like they don't read for enjoyment. This child I feel like I still have a chance with. So I bought her this reading journal from Not Consumed. I talked about all kinds of products that I bought from Not Consumed in this video recently. And this is kind of like more of the family subjects. I'm gonna talk more about what we're doing all as a family in another upcoming video. Since I did mention this and one of you said, I'd like a closer peek at this reading journal, I'm going to give you a closer peek at this reading journal. So first of all, excuse the green tablecloth, but I have a birthday girl at my house and we're having a party. And so I've got my party decorations up and I, you know, that is what it is. So this reading journal again is from Not Consumed. I will link them below and I would appreciate it so much if you used that link. It helps me out, helps my family, helps, helps me be able to keep creating this content for you. This reading journal is for grades two through five, it says, although you know you could use discretion whether or not you could use it younger or older. They've got some elementary picture book suggestions here, early chapter book suggestions. Now, Not Consumed is a Christian company, so keep that in mind. A lot of these suggestions, ooh, there's that ology. I've heard about that from some other YouTube videos and the Miller family series. We're actually going to be looking into those this year. I have some of those. So anyway, um, elementary chapter books. These are probably mostly going to be geared towards a Christian worldview. But you could use any book here. That's what I plan on doing. Whatever book we're doing, she's going to probably do one of these sections every day after she reads. So let's just take a look here. Book title, pages you read today, the date and what you thought of what you read, questions before you began reading, questions after reading, questions while reading. So, you know, I guess they may or may not have anything. Same thing every single day. What, what, how many pages did you read? What was your reading? but the activities are a little bit different. So this says learn more ways about the time period of this book, the author or any topic mentioned, and tell me what you found. So the time period of the book, if you know it, or the author. So fact one, fact two, fact three, fact four. Next is share it. This book is so blank that I must tell blank about it, and here's why. So either the book is bad or the book is good. Write your opinion. Write or draw a different ending of the story. A word study. Write three verbs from today's reading and draw one. Write three nouns from today's reading and draw one. Write three adjectives. Okay, and then in this book, fact or fiction, write three clues that help you know the answer. Clue one, clue two, clue three. Fact or fiction, how do you know? Relating to your character, have you ever felt like one of the characters in the story? Yes or no, explain your answer, then draw about it. And then the scene. What was the setting? Draw a scene from the book. So see how every single page is different. I mean, you can see just as I flip through here, here's a Venn diagram. Compare yourself with one of the characters. You, the character, and what characters do you both share? Sequence, a character profile. If you could meet character, what would you say? Learn something new. So look, I'm still turning pages and I haven't seen one activity that looks the same. So this is why I bought this journal because it just had a lot of variety in it. Okay, this is the same. This Some of this is the same. So, but I'm on page, let's see, there's no page numbers here. 
but I got through that many pages before it started repeating some of the activities. So I like it. I think this will be good to help reinforce some of the reading comprehension. Help your kids think about what it is that they're reading and dabble in some literary analysis. And speaking of that, another thing I bought her this year was a dart guide from Julie Bogart's website. <laughs> I can't think of what the website is. Julie Bogart though has dart guides, arrow guides, boomerang guides. The name of the guide depends on the age of the child. So dart is for pretty young kids. I bought House at Pooh Corner because I've never read House at Pooh Corner and it's supposed to be a classic, right? So I thought that would be fun. So I actually did just go ahead and buy the House at Pooh Corner from Thrift Books, which I have them linked below. Thrift Books is probably the cheapest used book online provider of all of the used book sources. They might be the cheapest. They're the ones that I always use because I get rewarded. You know, the more that I purchase from them, then I earn free books. So here is a peek at the dart guide. So I'm not sure when we're gonna do this. Because I bought this language arts, and this is 120 lessons, this is kind of also a grammar guide. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna squeeze it in or what I might cut out from there, but we'll just see how our year goes. This is a digital download, and they show you how to prep it, how you could use this with your child, but they have copy work every week. So this would be from the passage, so you, after you read chapter one, make sure you're ahead in the book than you are in the guide, if that makes sense. So she would be copying this sentence every day, and we would be talking about different grammar elements. So why this passage? Because it talks about time in it. So see, way half an hour later. What to note, capital letters and in Pooh's house, it's always five minutes to 11, conjunctions, their possessive pronoun, highlight in this week about copy work. So we're, we'll have to be doing this together. She's not gonna be able to do this on her own. It said, notice this word clock, say it out loud and listen to the k sounds. So this might actually be a little bit remedial for my daughter, but I thought it would be fun to just try. She's gonna learn how to write these words for these numbers. Counting rhymes, dabbling in a little bit. It all points back to the book. So you're reading a book and then you're learning grammar and literary elements from the book. At the end of the week, you get an activity. Time flies when you're having fun. Grab a piece of paper or a whiteboard and list as many time words and phrases as you can think of. Did you notice that we snuck another one in there with now? You may want to keep it handy to add more phrases about time and stuff. And then also at the end of the week, there's also dictation. So because she'll be doing that little sentence copy work every day, well, here's week two. So she'll be getting used to copying this every day that at the end of the week, there's French dictation where like I could type out this passage and leave out the punctuation and have her like write her little editing marks to edit it or I could leave out, I could misspell words and have her edit it, or I could just dictate it to her and see if she could write all this from memory. If she's written it every single day of the week, she might be able to do that. And then she'll be learning about quotes and exclamations and you know where to put the commas inside the exclamation. So that's how these guides teach the grammar. For these guides, arrow guides, dart guides, all the guides, they suggest parties when you finish the book. So there's book party ideas in here. The House at Pooh Corner book party idea. Um, here's some ideas that you could do for your party. You could have honey, bitto honey, honey sticks. Um, you could have kangaroo sandwiches, tiger tails. So if you wanted to host a little book club party, there's ideas already in here for that. I know I've seen lots of YouTube videos about various arrow guides because Julie Bogart comes out with like 10 every single year for every every different age level and she's been at this for a long time so her website has a ton of guides for various books so like if you watch my favorite read alouds I mentioned that this year we're going to be reading the one and only Ivan and I know Julie Bogart has I think it's an arrow guide which arrow guide meaning like fourth through sixth grade level. I think she has an arrow guide for that. Dart would be like first grade through third grade. And boomerang is like middle school and then high school, I think 
might have their own age level, but I can't remember what they're called right now. So anyway, check out Brave Rider website if you want to try one of these guides. I think they are between $12 and $15 per guide. So this was a pretty low cost risk to try one. You can buy a subscription for the whole year though and get access to like 10 guides for the whole year. But I have yet to see a YouTube video where people actually got through <laughs> 10 in a year because there's so much that you could like chew on and unpack from these guides that you wouldn't wanna rush through it. Here's what else I'm doing for language arts for my third grader. I have this book that this is a, it says teacher, teacher created materials book. It's pretty old. I'm sure you could find it on Amazon. In fact, if you can, I'll link it below. But I had this book from my middle child. She started this when she was in second grade. This says grade two. But all it really is, it's sentence editing. So you write the sentence, you note any punctuation, any capitalization missing, and you just rewrite it correctly. And it's just little daily exercises. And so since my middle child had already started the book, but she was only on page 28 when she quit. So we still have quite a bit to go. And so with my third grader, I thought this would be an easy little activity she could do every day. And for the various units, at the beginning of each unit, it kind of tells you these are the rules to note and these are the rules that you're gonna be practicing going forward until the next unit. So we're just gonna do a little bit of sentence editing practice every day along with the good and the beautiful and then whenever we dabble in our brave writer. And then for math, we are sticking with what works. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So we are sticking with our Singapore primary math. She's almost done with level 2B and we're gonna be moving on to level 3A. So if you watched my math comparisons video, I did mention in there Singapore is pretty advanced. So level two is probably actually third grade level. And Singapore, this US edition primary math actually ends with 6B. And then what I've heard is from 6B, you're ready for high school math or at least pre-algebra. I think it's advanced. I know when my son was doing it, he did it until about level five and he was already doing algebraic concepts by then. I recommend Singapore math if you have a mathematically inclined child and that's what we will be sticking with this year for my third grader. If you want to know more about uh, the different math programs that we have done, check out this video and if you want to know what, what we did for second grade, right there. And stay tuned for what we will be doing as a family coming up next. Bye.